What does that say? E02. Shut her down. Good day everybody, welcome to today's video. This is Jerry from Backcountry Ranching. In today's video, I'm gonna show you an alternative for a diesel heater. Now for the one I built, I did a whole video series of building it in a big plastic case. It's durable, it's tough, it's rugged, you can take abuse. And after I worked out the bugs, this thing has worked absolutely flawless. So just to go over it quickly, the black case I got from Princess Auto, the intake tube I purchased from Princess Auto, the red accents, the grills, I 3D printed. This marine through exhaust I got from Amazon. Obviously, the uh, heater itself I got from Amazon. There's a turbo fan, the temperature, that's all from Amazon. And this thing has worked excellent. It has not left me freezing to death after I've worked out the whole bugs. However, something like this might be a little bit too complicated for someone to go ahead and build. So in today's video, I got in this box a little miniature version of an all-in-one. It's so basically this one here with a few little mods. We're gonna be set up and ready to go in no time flat. So if you look at this thing, it's so tiny. This is what it came with. I did order these elbows separately because I'm going to raise this up a little bit. We got the flaps right there. So we're gonna put like two inch spacers, bring it up a little higher so I can run my exhaust and intake. However, what I do wanna do is I wanna take this top off because something is rattling inside. It did not come very well packaged. So it got a little beat up in delivery. Okay, whatever's rattling's inside this fuel tank. And that is it right there. Looks like looks like the plug that might have been in there. I got everything laid out here for the diesel heater build. As you can see right there, it's all contained. Quite a bit smaller than what I did in this Princess Auto case. It was a really good idea. This is very, very durable. As you can tell, there's lots of use. I did print a 3D print a new grate for that. I need to install, but I haven't got around to it. So what I'm gonna do is, I purchased a new cable off Amazon. I'm not gonna use the one that came with the kit because I can hook it up to a power supply and i got these elbows off amazon that i'm going to use for my build i was going to run my intake through the hole but i think i'm just going to short it and with the aluminum i'm going to cut nine and a half inches i'm going to put on the base just to give me a little extra height i don't want the exhaust too close to the ground where it may melt through catch a fire even though it would sit like that except for the intake there it would cause a little bit of issues but I'm just going to have it raised just a tad. Need to get this snugged up. Trying out this Titan ratchet I got from Princess Auto. When I was doing some impulse buying. Got to be careful with these 90s too because they are sharp. They don't give you a lot of room in there to try to tighten these fittings up. Well, this Evolution chop saw says that it can cut aluminum. So we're going to find out the truth behind that. I take the roughness off these.
Power fist. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rivet it on. It's going to be the easiest way. I haven't used this Mac Tools air riveter in a while. Way back in the day when I was in school at SAIT, doing my millwright course, you used to be able to get everything off the Mac Tools truck when you're in school for half price while you're in school. It actually worked out really well. I don't know if they offer that still, but uh, when I was doing my apprenticeship, I purchased a lot of Mac Tools for half price. And you may ask, why would I get an air riveter? Because at that time we we're doing a lot of modifications to oil field trailers and stuff. So an air riveter sure sped things up. And as you can see, it is sweet. Yeah, that first one's done. Nice. As you can see, gives me a little bit of clearance there. That way when I put it in the snow, it's not going to sink down and sit in its own puddle of water. It's going to be elevated a little bit. We just need to do the electrical, put some fuel in it, try it out. I was going to make this piece detachable, but I'm just going to leave it the way it is because it does have the remote control. And the exhaust runs out to the side where I shouldn't have any issues with carbon monoxide. Now on my Princess Auto case one, the I use the through hole exhaust and I just leave it like that. I've never had any issues. And it does actually run pretty quiet. So I'm gonna see, or will be curious I should say to know how well this one is gonna be. Gonna build our wire, cut that off. Strip that back a bit. These are my favorite wire strippers right there. Let's get these taken care of. I'm gonna then use my power fist crimps right here, rig terminals. I always pick a bunch up when they're on sale because they are expensive to buy. So I'm just gonna crimp that in. Want to make sure it's tight because if I'm out in the bush and one of these comes loose it's going to be a cold night. So you don't want that to happen. Let's get some fuel in there. Now we're set up, do some testing. I figure it's probably gonna do about three cycles before it primes itself. One thing that I kind of overlooked and I'm noticing it now is that that metal on the frame is very flimsy. I thought it'd be stronger than that. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye out. So I got the Blue Eddy EB55. Let's get this thing powered on. Looks like we got a full charge. Do we have? Can't read anything off that screen. I'm going to try a different power supply. Not that it's going to make any difference, anyways.
other diesel heater runs off these power supplies, so not sure why this one here won't. Yeah, powered out. E02. Yeah, I'm not gonna waste my time with this anymore. Now this was a waste of time. I don't know if I'm gonna toss this in the garbage or save it for another day. This was sent to me to do a video on and you know, things should work. There's a glow plug I had to replace when I first got it. I've actually had this thing for a few months. Replaced a glow plug and now this. Shut her down. We're done. We're done with this. Dumping the diesel. I should just toss this in the garbage. Wasting my time. <sighs> Trying to screw around with this. This is going to be for the haters who are going to try to argue that those power supplies may be giving out more than 12 volts and that could be the issue. This is for you, the armchair know-it-alls that know sweet fuck all. I get DC power supply, 12 volts, right on the biscuit. Let's follow the wires. We're not going to have any breaking video here. Hey, let's... Let's try this again. Oh, you see the fan come on? Glow plug is lighting. What does that say E02? Shut her down. Fucking junk. Garbage. All right, we taught it a lesson now. See if it wants to communicate. Oh, same thing. We're done. We're done with you. Depends on where you go on the internet. Some say E02 is under voltage. Here's a manual that says it is over voltage. Doesn't matter. I stripped it down. Gonna salvage the parts. Fuel pump can be used. Electric fan. Maybe the burner box or something I'm gonna use for that. The rest of it, I don't need that tank, case. Everything else is going in the garbage. You know what time it is? It's time to shut it down. We got some rogue bat squatch. Hazy India Pale Ale. Love the IPAs. And this is coming in at 6.7%. Shut her down. Well, you win some, you lose some. Like I said, I've had this diesel heater for probably about three months when I first got it, when they sent it to me. There was a glow plug issue, so I ordered a glow plug, and that took like a month and some, and then it was uh, Christmas time, and I didn't really bother about it, and then they started asking about it, so I'm like, okay, I'll finish off the video, and of course, I put it together, and you know, more issues. I don't have time for that. I don't have time to be trying to troubleshoot something that should have worked in the first place. Anyways, I need to have a sip of this beer. It is what it is. Sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you end up with a dud. This one must have been a dud, but I stripped it down. Gonna salvage the parts off of it for whatever I could use on my other one. And uh, gonna continue to use old trusty faithful there. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. It always feels good to get some rage out and smash something. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody. Shut her down.